Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Faceless Podcast. In this one, I'm going to be probably a little bit quieter. If I wait now, redo that after I've set my mic up and everything. <laughs> redo the whole intro. <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Faceless Podcast. In this one, I'm probably going to be a lot quieter because it is a lot later. It's like 11 o'clock. People have gone bed, so I'm going to be a bit quieter in this one, but still gonna try and be a bit energetic so that's probably why i sound quiet and my voice sounds a lot well a bit deeper than my normal voice which sounds a bit like this it just sounds like this now so deal with that for this <laughs> uh in this podcast i'm gonna be talking about why i don't like youtube now you may be wondering faceless you don't like youtube but you're uploading on it if you didn't like youtube why would you upload on it there is a small difference i enjoy creating videos for for youtube i enjoy people that make content on youtube specifically the good ones but we'll talk about the shit ones later i don't like the people that run youtube anymore back in like what 2006 when it was founded it was two guys that literally ran the entire goddamn website two guys and it was a really chill place and uh, 2012 i'd say was probably the peak of youtube you could make money off youtube it had a very good way of making money it wasn't based off watch time it was based off views um it was pretty much impossible to get demonetized it was brilliant but nowadays it has become so family friendly the like too family friendly for its own good because youtube is a platform for 13s and overs but they advertise it as this thing that two-year-olds should be using to learn about counting from one to three which is not what it was meant for um so i'm going to start from the very beginning back when it when youtube i'm going to start a bit ahead i'm going to start when youtube first got monetization because when that went downhill most of youtube started going downhill so i think youtube got monetization programming around in early 2000s late early 2010s late 2000s probably like 2009 2011 i'm not sure i was only like four probably when it came out so i don't know but youtube monetization i know back in ye old days of youtube monetization you couldn't get demonetized you could only have your videos taken down and um that actually really really helped the platform because a lot more people would go hey i can make money off this and as long as I don't make it against the terms of service, I can make what I want and make money off it. Which you can still sort of do to this day. It's just a lot harder nowadays. Um, by the way, I'm not speaking from the perspective of someone that's monetized. I have zero monetization on this channel. And I have zero aspect of putting on monetization until I'm making more than a five or a month. Because if I put it on now... Which I can't, but let's say I got enough watch hours to put on monetization right now. I'd be making like two pounds a month. And I'd rather not put people through watching unskippable ads and ads that they can skip and all that. Just for two pounds a month. I'd rather wait until I'm actually making something that would actually benefit me to be able to put through put people through that. So I'm not gonna put monetization on for a very long time. Um but I know that back in the old days, you didn't have to make, you didn't have to censor, you didn't have to do all this, um, like censoring, making sure that everything's a bit family friendly, uh, you just made videos that were to the terms of service and you could make money. And it also had a pretty decent system that was a bit broken, so I understand why they changed it. Um, they used to do it on a system of the most views. Uh, the more views you get is the amount of money you make. So, for example, let's say each view acquainted to one penny. If you got hun- if you got a thousand views on a video, that would be ten pounds in your pocket. If you got a million views, that would be uh, ten grand in your pocket. So, that that was an old system that worked until people started making like v- videos that made like a million constantly so they had to change it but they i think that was a decent system 
uh, for the time. I don't, I'm not a fan of the system they have now, but I understand very much so why they have it, because if you don't know what the system is now, it's based on how long people watched your videos. Um, this was also to deter people from making, like, really, really short, like, two second videos that got, like, well, like, not even two seconds, like, a minute videos that got millions of views, which gave them a fuck ton of money when putting little effort in, when there was other people that put, like, made hour videos putting a lot of effort in and not making as much money as these people. So the watch hour thing is there to make sure that, dependent on the quality and time of length of the video, that's how much you'll get paid, so. Example, let's say a minute is, okay, let's just go out on a whim set, and a minute is a pound. That's not how it works, but let's say a minute is a pound. So these videos that get uploaded, they get, like, that two minutes, let's say everybody watches one minute and everyone clicks off after the very first minute. And it was a million views. That would be a million pounds. It's not how it works. It's a lot cheaper than that, but let's just pretend. Um, but then you've got the half an hour videos that have that get a million views. Then let's say everyone clicks off at the 15 minute mark. That's 15 million. So they've done it in a way that makes it so shorter content doesn't make as much. But still gets more views somehow. It's a bit confusing. Um, which they kind of backfired with because they're, now they've got YouTube shorts. But again, on with that later. But, and the reasoning of why they changed the number one. The reason why they changed that is because, you know, it made more sense for the um, type of content that was being produced on YouTube. It helped um, creators of all sorts with actually being able to make money. It did harm some creators. It did harm... The animation community because animation takes a fuck ton of time back back when animation youtubers were a thing they're uploading like once every six months some of them still do um but they've had to adapt to animating like 10 times faster having a massive team to be able to get out and still be in the youtube algorithm um but, and recently i think it was like well not recently but a little bit after or a little bit before they changed it to the watch time system they also introduced demonetization if you don't know what that is demonetization pretty much means there will be no money made on that video that money cannot make money and any money made off that video will either go to youtube or will go to whoever's claimed it if it's a copyright claim demonetized but again on with that later um pretty much demonetization existed because the content that YouTube had that wasn't... Let's describe it. Advertisers... Okay, I'll, I'll explain advertisers. Advertisers pay a certain amount for their adverts to be on YouTube. So, for example, let's say an advert for Raid Shadow Legends. They want their advert to be on there. They'll bid a certain amount to be on that type of content, let's say gaming. And then there's a Plants vs. Zombies advert. They would also pay... They would also bid a certain amount to make to get their advert there and whoever pays the most gets their advert on there first and then that money goes like 50 50 or i think it's like 40 60 to youtube gets 40 creator gets 60 i think um so yeah that's how it worked but advertisers didn't like what was happening with content the content on youtube wasn't filtered like it it was in the guidelines of TOS, like no sexual content, no um, stealing, no graphic violence. Well, that one kind of get. I don't think that's actually one, but sounds. I'm pretty sure it was one at one point. But stuff like that, uh, and no copyright was one. But that got bomb raped to fucking hell. And um, what happened was advertisers were pulling their ads off YouTube, so there was getting less and less ads off of these advertisers, which meant that YouTube and the creators were making less and less money. So to please advertisers, what they did is they added the demonetization system, which is a bit odd. So if there's too much swearing in the video, it gets demonetized. If there's too much graphic content, it gets demonetized. If it's, um, if it's got anything, anything that goes against the TOS, but not enough to ban it, it will be demonetized or age restricted. Uh, and if it's age restricted, there's, less ads because less people see it blah 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 um and advertisers were happy with this but content creators weren't because demonetization is not 
most of the time, 90% of the time is not um, done by a human. It's done by an algorithm that chooses is it family friendly or not. And this means that someone could make something very family friendly, but it gets demonetized because the system's picked up on something. And then someone could make, I don't know, Mortal Kombat fatality scenes, and it won't get demonetized because they had because they didn't pick up on it. So the fa they've improved the algorithm since then for demonetization, but it's still not the best. But there has also been an exploit found with it. Um, demonetization likes to demonetize things that have swearing. It just if you swear in your videos, it will demonetize you. But people found out it's only in, I think it's the first. It's either the first 30% or the first three minutes of the video that it actually checks for swearing and everything else gets checked afterwards. So if you don't swear or you sense you're swearing for the first three minutes, you'll get monetized as long as there's nothing else bad in it, which is pretty decent. Um, but yeah, that was the first adpocalypse and the, the fix they had for it was demonetization, which is good on paper. Um... There was another adpocalypse later. I think it was to do with the um, Elsa Spider-Man thing. The Elsa Spider-Man thing was a thing was a was something. Um, pretty much family-friendly channels that made channels oriented for children, which shouldn't really be on there because it's a 13 plus site. Were creating stuff like Elsa and Spider-Man thing where Elsa was pregnant. There was the Joker in it. And it was really, really manipulative and very, very weird. But that that luckily got wiped off the face of the earth. But that was a thing that caused an adpocalypse. Again, these advertisers did not like um, what was happening in the videos because it was meant to be fam family friendly, like for eight, like two year olds. But there was, I'm pretty sure there was some like sexual stuff there, not like visible, but like interpreted. And advertisers didn't like that, so they pulled their ads again. So they had to completely wipe the face of the earth of that. But that that was that showed you, but that brought light to something else, which caused something horrible. Well, we thought it was going to be horrible, but it hasn't really done anything. Copper. If you don't know what copper is, copper is child of protect. It's like it's like a child protective services for the internet, and. Pretty much, Copper had a massive go at YouTube for pretty much hosting kids' stuff and then using the kids' data, like like under 13's data, I think it's under 18's data, to find limited ads, to get targeted ads. And if you don't know what targeted ads are, again, I'll explain. Um, targeted ads are pretty much ads, ads that like, YouTube will take information of what you watch. So let's say you watch a bunch of gaming videos. You'll see a bunch of gaming ads. You watch a bunch of ASMR videos. There'll be a bunch of ASMR. A bunch of podcasts. There'll be podcast ones. Um, tech ones. There'll be tech ones. So so on and so forth. But that's pretty much how targeted ads work. Now, you're only allowed to have your data collected on the internet if you're 18 or over. Or... Yeah, no, just if you're 18 or over or your parents consent uh, for it to happen. So... That's the thing, and Copper picked up on the fact that YouTube was pretty much taking data from under from underages, and had a massive go at YouTube for that. Now, YouTube is a 13 plus site, so this shouldn't be a problem. Well, I don't think it's a problem. It, I'm not. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure they're not allowed to collect. No, it might be they're not allowed to collect data of under 13s because it is a 13 plus site. But they were more concerned with the fact it was people under 13 that were had their data collected because that's illegal and um, they had to pay like a two billion dollar fine or a two million dollar fine something like that um but youtube kind of bump kind of fucking ruined themselves there um because they kept advocating youtube is a 13 plus site this site is for you for 13 plus we have youtube kids which was created specifically for children but they kind of ruined that by saying, like, YouTube is the most viewed platform of twos and unders for educational videos. Eights and unders love YouTube for the kid-friendly content on there. And so much stuff about kids. This created a thing for YouTube which pretty much made it so 
they couldn't back out of this copper situation that they forced themselves into. So they had to pay up to copper and then they had to um, make changes. Uh, and the rules that they had set is that if your content was too family friendly or very family friendly, then you it you couldn't find it by s the video by searching for it you couldn't comment on the video i don't think you could even like or dislike it you couldn't interact with the video um the only way you could find it is by clicking on that person's channel and then finding it in their videos um and it wouldn't have any targeted ads which is 90 percent of your adverts so that is 90% of your revenue on that video gone because it's not targeted so and this left people in like 2019 in a massive kerfuffle and of not knowing what to do because if they make it family friendly it could get blocked to everybody pretty much and if it was not and if it was not family friendly at all it could get demonetized making it meaning they make no money so they we thought well, everyone thought at the beginning that we're fucked, we're screwed, but they made it. They made it so you could choose when you upload. Is it eighteen plus? Do you want it to be age restricted? And if you picked it, it's eighteen plus, and you don't want it to be age restricted, anyone can view it, um, and there will be targeted ads. Uh, age restricted just means that pretty much only eighteen overs can watch videos, um, and if you picked for under 18s only no no targeted ads for you um so yeah that all got resolved um and recently youtube in my opinion is going through a very confusing time and i think it's trying to be not controversial at all which is making it controversial so one thing that they've changed very recently in the past like month is the dislike button. Everyone's been going on about the dislike button and how terrible it is. And I'm going to give my opinions on it. It is the worst decision YouTube has ever made, in my opinion. So, why is that? Well, I'm going to explain. The dislike button, you can't publicly see it. If you go onto any video right now, you cannot see dislikes. They are completely gone. So you may be wondering, well, why is that a bad thing? Well, you can't... So, a good example is, let's say a YouTuber has made an apology video and it's complete bullshit. So, for example, Mini Lad. I'm not going to talk about too much about it, but he made an apology video for doing terrible things and everyone disliked it, pretty much, because they didn't agree with and his actions and they thought his, his apology was disingenuine and blah 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 I'm not gonna get into it but the video had a fuck on dislikes you can't see those dislikes now so people look at the video see the likes and go ah people have forgiven him uh he should be forgiven uh another example is um scam videos like, if you want to find a, let's say you want to find, I know it's illegal, a cracked version of Premiere Pro. I don't use Premiere Pro, um, I use HitFilm, but I know there's a lot of tutorials out there saying, here's a cracked version of Premiere Pro, um, download it. You could tell which ones were which by which one had the most dislikes. If it had a fuck ton of dislikes, it was a scam. If it had, didn't have any dislikes, had a bunch of likes and a bunch of comments from, like, that were all very diverse in the way they spoke, it wasn't a scam. Now you can't see the dislikes, which makes it a lot harder to tell if a video is a scam or not. Another example, another example of dislikes being horrible, is if people is. I've just had a thought. Yeah, wait, no, I've just had a thought. I think I've real realized why YouTube has removed dislike button, and it's not to, as they say, to like protect creators that have, you know, um, get dislike bombed because you can still see it if you've uploaded the video you can see the dislikes i can go on my youtube studio right now and see all the fucking dislikes on my videos i can see all of them um so it's not really changed anything um and one thing that is i think i've figured out why it's to help company images 
what gets the most dislikes on on videos on youtube it's either apology videos or company videos company videos that like videos that are run by youtube channels that companies get a fuck ton of dislikes a lot of the time example the original sonic the hedgehog trailer luckily they were actually open to the criticism and changed it but you know um youtube rewind 2019 or 2018 i can't remember had the i'm pretty sure that is the most disliked video on youtube you can't see that anymore um there was also and there was also a bunch of comp i'm pretty sure there was a bunch of companies complaining saying they were getting a fuck ton of dislikes on youtube and they've changed it so i'm guessing that they've changed it not to help creators but to help their image so that more companies will make videos and more companies will put their adverts on their site which is unfortunate because YouTube back in 2006 YouTube 2006 to 2012 is I'd say the golden age of YouTube it was created there weren't many problems and I believe that YouTube during that time cared for their creators they actually gave one about their creators nowadays they're there for the companies they're not there for you for the creators like an example of showing that they don't care about the creators they'll just do something is instead of if you've made a video that can be that is deemed you know to be taken down to be striked because it's not with the terms of service they'll just do it they don't send you an email saying hey we have found stuff in this video if you don't take it down within 24 hours or do or check get rid of this bit in 24 hours from the video because you can remove bits and um, we will strike your channel that would make videos so much like better to be able to handle because currently if you upload a video that could get taken down it's like a 50 50 of if it's going to or not but if you want to upload a video and you know it's got a high chance of being taken down i think youtube should send you an email saying hey this is not up to terms of service remove this section because you can remove audio um you can replace audio and you can just delete parts of the video um com for completely on youtube you don't have to re-upload the video um <clears throat> so you could just do that but youtube doesn't have doesn't send you an email to do that they just do they just get rid of it which has caused youtube channels like markiplier markiplier got his first strike i think he got i think he got removed though because they realized how dumb it was markiplier got a strike on one of his videos um he pretty much asked for it but instead of you know sending because it, it showed footage of like someone fighting someone else in one of his try not to laugh challenges um which was in someone else's video that got taken that got taken down so he asked youtube hey make it fair take mine down and they did but instead of like sending like an email or a message saying hey this video isn't up to scratch get rid of it they just did it that doesn't show care for creators youtube is always on about we love our creatives creators we strive to make our creators happy they sh don't strive to make the creators happy they strive to make the companies happy because they i i get trying to cater to both but they're not catering to both they're just catering towards companies which is bad public image anyways you can't cater too much to one side of why it's a bad image because like youtube doesn't care for its creators like there's gonna be articles youtube doesn't care for its creators it only cares about making the most money possible which will make youtube's reputation go down and more people will leave the site and you can't care too much for the creators otherwise companies will be like oh youtube is not caring for the advertisers that want it and the advertisers will pull out their adverts it's very hard and i understand that to cater to both but it's very simple things that can cause it to cater to both so example demonetization that caters to advertisers 
um, copyright claims that caters to advert advertisers. What they should do to cater to creators is um, emailing them about videos, saying this, remove this or do this, and we'll reinstate it. Or one thing that I thought of is an idea is on whenever you're watching a video on the right, there's recommended videos. I think they should have one at the top that's that has that is for YouTubers that are under 10k subscribers because they're always striving about we need to get as many big YouTubers as possible because that's the whole goal on YouTube it's to become as big as possible they should have a thing on the right on the very top that says that a section that's literally just called um <clears throat> like I don't know what it would be called but it's like you, it would only put up videos of YouTubers that are under 10k subs but it won't show the same video twice within a certain amount of time. So for example, let's say it'll show one of my videos. Um, but then they click on something else. Let's say they click on a most critical video. Um, then that tr that video will change to a Caleb Assaulty video. It will switch out and it will try and get you to look at these channels, these smaller channels that have potential to see if they actually do something. And that will create so many creators will become big because of it. Now, people see that as an issue. I don't see it as an issue. It would be an issue if it was on something like Twitch. Because Twitch, Twitch is all about your live viewers. Um, YouTube is about your just view, just people that want to watch your videos. So competition isn't really a massive thing. Because you can prefer somebody over someone else, but... Like, I prefer 8-Bit Ryan videos to Dorker videos, but I would still watch a Dorker video if it was in my rec if it was a look like a decent one in my recommended. Um, so there isn't really much things as, like, competition on YouTube, in my opinion. Because when YouTubers say there's a lot of competition, it's, it's not really. Because you could, two people could make the exact same type of content. For example, um the 100 days minecraft challenges there are so many channels that just do 100 day hardcore minecraft 100 day hardcore but i'm in the ocean 100 day hardcore but i'm on the, the floor is lava stuff like that and there's so many channels that do different versions of that but it's all this very same concept i watch quite a few of them and um, it's not competition on youtube in my opinion is not about getting the most views for that category competition is making sure that they watch yours first because if they watch yours first they are more they are less likely to click on someone else's they are more likely to stay watching yours for example if i was watching a salty fish video i'd most likely just keep clicking salty fish videos for a long time until i click on until i see one that looks Jumping, let's say I'm just watching like five salty fish videos and then I see one that's like Mr. Beast has just uploaded Squid Game Part 2. I'll click on that. It's it's all about trying to keep people watching your videos for as long as possible. And that's how channels grow. Like, if I go on studio real quick. If let's say someone goes on my channel, they watch my most recent video, which is my FNF Sonic EXE mod, and they go, Ooh, that was a nice video. And about ten minutes in they see and in my in their recommended they see one of my other videos let's say my scariest fan interaction they'll click on that and they'll go oh that was also a nice video let's go and then they'll go down let's say they'll watch um overwatch 2.5 and then at the end of that they'll click on faceless podcast my faceless podcast one but then eventually they will get bored and see something else that they'll click on but since I since they've watched three of most of three of my videos, YouTube will see that as oh this guy's content is good. Let's recommend it to people. So that's how that works. If you didn't know. But yeah, in my opinion, as it stands, YouTube is in a terrible place. It is gaining views, but it's losing fans. If that makes sense, it's like a YouTube. It's a, it's literally YouTube. It's like its own channel. It's gaining and losing people at the same time. So. Yeah. That's been my thoughts on YouTube so far. 
uh, I hope to God that they decide to step up the game and actually give one about the creators for once. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video or podcast.